you ministers of his who do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Lord, we thank you that your angels hearken unto your word to perform it. We thank you for the angels that are on assignment. To begin to do what man can't. And Lord I thank you that even tonight is a fresh impartation. Of activation for your individual angel. To begin to move into areas of breakthrough and promise. And I see breaker angels in the room right now. I want you to just raise your hands and right now in Jesus' name, we just honor the angelic hosts that are in this room. And I thank you for breakthrough. I thank you for the fulfillment of promises. We honor you. And we say thank you, messengers, that you've come to fulfill on this earth just like it is in heaven. Whew. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Oh my gosh. How good it is when brethren dwell together in unity. It's like fresh oil. That runs down on the beard onto the garment <clears throat> that covers the body. What an ambush. What an ambush. But you understand how significant your role is in a corporate gathering. How good it is when brethren dwell together in unity. When we're not just sitting back going, tell me something I don't know. But we're coming into a place as the ecclesia contending for one thing and one thing only to step into a greater relationship with Jesus Christ in such a way that it literally brings me out of old mindsets. It literally catapults me out of areas where you have been stuck. How many know a revelation will do that for you? So Lord, we give honor where honor's due tonight and make no mistake about it, where the king is, his kingdom is also. You become who you hang around. It's too late. It's already on you. You'll see the fruit of it. No, you'll see the fruit of it. It's like smoke. You may not smoke, but if you get around people who do, and you leave their presence, people will accuse you. It's the exact same thing. You become who you hang around. You get into the presence of God. 
this presence will remain. It's just looking for a place to happen. Here we are, Lord. Make it happen. In Jesus' mighty name. Look at the person next to you and say, well, the glory looks good on you. You look better than when you walked in here. In Jesus' mighty name. It's my privilege tonight to introduce one of our guests that are with us tonight. Donna Shambach. I met her, and how long has it been? Four or five years or something like that? I met through Katie Sousa. Katie Sousa. And uh, one thing that um, has been consistent with us is, is we're just not really into meet and greet as much as we're into relationship. Somebody say longevity. And when we met Donna, uh, it was just a kindled, kindled heart. I, I like people that say what they mean and mean what they say. Let your yes be yes and your no be. And uh, that's the first thing that uh, inspired me about Donna. And the second thing was, uh, and I don't know if you even remember this, but uh, I picked you up. This was one of the first times you were with us, and I think you were in the downtown Marriott. And I picked you up, and you were asking me about uh, where I was in, in this local church, and and, uh, and I just began to kind of share my heart with you on it. And, and you looked at me right in the eye and you said, you know what one of the main reasons of my daddy's success? How many want to know the answer to that? R.W. Shambach is who we're talking about, right? And I said, yes, I would. And it, she said, it's his relationship with the local church. And something broke in me that day. How many know that God is doing a new thing? And he's teaching us how to play well with others. How many know pastors need prophets? How many know prophets need pastors? And uh, before the Lord released us into this place, I walked with that, that pastor the next four years. And when you get around a pastor, you're going to learn how to love. Right. Prophets don't love people. <laughs> oh, we do. How many know that you need to learn how to love people? And so uh, that's something that I'm still walking in the fruit of to this day. And if you're a pastor in this room... I want you to stand to your feet tonight. If, if you're a pastor, come on, stand up. Let's give honor where honor's due. Look at all the pastors in this place. Come on. Yeah, come on, let's give honor where honor's due. Let's say thank you to these pastors that represent these different cities. And what a privilege and an honor it is to labor with you in the body of Christ in Jesus' mighty name. So without any more further introduction, for a few moments, would you welcome with me tonight, Donna Shambach? Absolutely. Come on, give Jesus a great big hand. He's in the room. Hallelujah. You may be seated. I don't want to be long today, but I thought it was really interesting. Um, this afternoon, after an awesome meeting, how many of you were here in the morning sessions? Most of you. I told um, Brother Rodney, I said, if I never preached tomorrow, God had me here for this morning. Because there was such an impartation on so many different levels to me. When I went home, uh, back to the hotel, which can feel like home <laughs> at times, um, I said, Lord, how do I appropriate this? You know, um, Dr. Larry, years ago, I won't say how many, we used to come down to Rockwall, our church from the Bronx, our whole team would come down 
to hear the message you taught today. And I say this with all respect. I don't know if it was your ministry or Jack Hayford's ministry, but there, I remember getting these laminated cards with how to pray through. Was that you? So I took it and I taught that. <laughs> so I taught what you taught today. But I'm going to tell you something. You didn't teach it today. You imparted it today. It was such a new, fresh, heavy, right now anointing on that word. I just don't have all the words to say, but I, I've seen the fall full circle. And I, I just pray that God opens so many doors for you because this is a generation that needs to learn this truth. And we have, we who are teachers and leaders, we have a responsibility to impart it from our lives. Somebody once told me, if you learn it in your mind, you can only teach to a mind. If you learn it from your heart, your emotions, you can only teach to emotions. But if you learn it from your life, and it's real in your life, then you can impart, impart it. So um, today, the Lord spoke to me and said, you're going to sow into that word. Because the other thing some of you may have known is Brother Greg got up and gave me a few choice words. And you want to talk about being blown away. Even words, prayer words that were in my mind that I never uttered were exposed today. I mean, it wasn't two weeks ago. I was watching the television and I said, I want to go to the Ukraine, Lord. After this is all over... I want to go in with Jesus. <laughs> and for you to say that, man, that just, you don't know how that floats my boat. But, I mean, I know that was the Lord. So, Rodney and Denise, thank you so much for making these times possible. You just have a love for the body of Christ and for the ministry people. And they are important. And they're going to make a difference, not only in this area, but every life that we touch. Anyway, the Lord spoke to me today, and he said, I want you to sow. And he gave me an amount that was challenging for me. He said, I want you to sow this tonight into Master's Arrow, and for, whether it's for the expense or for the next meeting. I don't know what it's for, but he gave me the amount. And uh, not long after the Lord told me that, Brother Rodney, he texted me, and he said, hey, would you mind sharing for the offering tonight. I said, absolutely, I'm ready. Because, you know, there are a lot of offerings that are mentioned in the Bible, and we could all pick our favorite one. But there's something about the passage in Genesis chapter 14 that always gets me every time I read it. And I'm not going to read the whole chapter. But this is when Abram was asked to go and form an army to retrieve Lot and all those that had been taken prisoners by the five kings. Remember that? And he did it. He accomplished it. And right when the king of Sodom was approaching Abram to make a pact with him, to make a treaty with him, he was going to offer him the world. God interrupted Abram's path, and he set him on an entirely new course through Revelation. And it was a new name to call his God, El Elyon, God Most High. Verse 18 of Genesis 14. Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was the priest of God Most High. And he blessed him, that's Abram, and said, Blessed be Abram of God most high, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be God most high, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. So here comes Melchizedek, which we believe is a theophany, a representation of Christ. And he's called the king of Salem. 
Jerusalem hadn't even been established yet, but a precursor place of worship. And he says, if you want to know why you were able to rescue Lot and everybody else, it's because the most high God is on your side. And the immediate reaction was, I want to give. The, the immediate reaction is, what did he say? And he gave him a tithe of everything he had, right. of all. He didn't, nobody had to coax him into an offering. No. Nobody had to twist his arm. But there was something he recognized in this one who was speaking to him, this priest, mysterious priest, who was talking to him about El Elyon, the Most High God. And then the next verse, pay attention to this, because this happens in all of our lives. Now the king of Sodom said to Abram, give me the persons and take the goods for yourself. But Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have raised my hand to the Lord, God Most High, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will take nothing from a thread to a sandal strap, and that I will not take anything that is yours, lest you should say, I have made Abram rich. You see, there was an immediate recognition of who Abram was aligning with, who was going to cover him, who was his protector, who fought with him. And the thing that helped him to break through in the midst of that revelation was was that covenant offering, that covenant gift that says everything that I have, God, you've got a part of it. I'm aligning with you. I want nobody else on this earth to say they made me rich. Only you will get the glory in my life. Only you. Come on. And I believe there's a way to give. There'll be no effect in it because we do it out of routine. We do it out of generosity. We do it sometimes thoughtlessly. But on a day like today, if you've been touched, blessed, ministered to, imparted to as I have, God's saying, no, you got to connect with this because if you really want a new if you really want a new, you got to do something you haven't ever done before, or you rarely do. The other thing I like about this, and I don't want to miss this point, because I tell you, Brother Larry, when you were preaching, I have carried since 2016 such a burden for this prodigal generation. I have prodigals in my own family. I want to see them have every gifting of the Holy Spirit. I want to see them to have every blessing of our heritage. Yeah. There's something that has to be shaken off of them, and it's only going to be done through prayer. Yeah. And I, when I think about how Abram had just rescued his family, <laughs> oh, we'd have to rescue him again. But the family's important. The next generation, what are they going to do if they don't have the tools? If they can't put the armor on, as we've been told today, what are they going to do? The enemy is going to eat their lunch. We have to sow into the next, into the new. It's not about our ministries. It's not about some, making our name great. It's not about about being fulfilled in our destiny. It's about seeing what God's going to do on this earth and what is our part in that. Does anybody believe that with me? I'm going to ask you, if you would, to bow your head. We, I never receive an offering unless we pray first. God may have already spoken to some of you, but I'm going to ask you to ask largely tonight. Say, God, I want to see the Lord Most High. I want to be in covenant with the one who's going to rescue my kids, rescue this generation. 
I can't do it in my flesh, but I sure can tie into what you're doing in this earth, Lord. I can tie in to this prayer movement, to this secret place movement. I can tie into that, Lord. And so, Lord, I want to sow. Would you put an amount in our hearts tonight, God? It may be a challenge to us. But, Lord, we want to be just like Abram. We want to give you what you deserve. Something representative, Lord, of our covenant relationship. Thank you, Lord, for speaking. And now I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you help us to obey. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're making a check, you can make it out to Master's Arrow. There are envelopes you can give by credit card or whatever. Are these the offering baskets? I'm going to let you give the instructions, dear Brother Rodney. But are we bringing it tonight? When you're ready, stand to your feet, and then we'll bring our offering. Amen. Oh, man. The envelopes are in the back of your chair. Listen, make no mistake about it. Your giving doesn't bring our breakthrough. My giving brings our breakthrough. I so bear witness with this word. I believe that defining moments are representations or signs that this is an area to begin to sow into. The Bible says clearly that we reap where we sow. There's been so many times that there's been defining moments where God begins to decree a thing and I was crazy enough to believe him. And I begin to sow into it and God begin to release breakthroughs above and beyond anything that I could ever think or imagine. I bear witness with this word. My wife and I have our check in our hand. Make no mistake about it. So we want to give you just a moment to finish your writing. I see many. Oh, man. We'd like to have this whole shopping center, Donna. Yes. Yeah. You can go to the kiosk machine if you want to give online. Maybe you don't feel comfortable putting your card information. I assure you uh, that it's shredded. We don't keep it in-house or keep it on file. We will take care of that immediately after we run the card. But if you would feel more comfortable, then you can go to the kiosk machine like some of these individuals here and, and you can give online. Yeah, that's new for me. I, I don't know how to do that, but you younger people understand the text to give. <laughs> We've got that available too. You can just go to the website at masterzero.com. Come on, put, put it in your hand. Uh, Donna prayed over it. I, I want to decree over it. I want to decree the reality that this is the confidence that we have in you. Listen, if it doesn't mean anything to you, it doesn't mean anything to the Lord. This is the confidence that we have in you, that if we ask anything according to your will, you hear us. And if we know that you hear us, then we know that we have that which we're asking of you. God, we thank you. that you're Lord of the harvest in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said? Amen. Yes, we actually believe that uh, you walk by faith and not by sight. And when there's movement involved with your seed, then uh, we believe that we're stepping into the word. So if you'd just come and you can put your offering right there in the well. <laughs> Oh, 
Repeke siki tandara la bosha pa 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 pa. Wow. Bless you. Thank you. That's it. Ooh. Well, <laughs> tag, you're going to be it. Amen. Well, let me give a proper introduction. I tell you, uh, it has been an honor and a privilege uh, to meet Dr. Larry Lee and his precious wife, Leah. Do, do I say that right? Is it Leah? And uh, it's just been a real privilege to briefly talk with them to the extent that I have. But uh, the truth is, um, I may not know him personally, but I know the Holy Spirit. And uh, what, baby? I was born again in 1990. Okay. I moved from, uh, from Pennsylvania to Lubbock, Texas. I was going to Trinity Church. And there was church on the rock there. I learned how to pray. Because you taught me. I learned how to pray because I, I started eating the word of Matthew 6. It has become a bedrock in our ministry, in our life, to meet with God in the secret place. And it is an honor. Dr. Larry Lee, it is an honor to have you in our house. It's my honor. Well, I believe, I'm, I, I believe I have been properly honored. Thank you. Bless you. Thank you, guys. It's such a joy tonight to fellowship with you and with the angels that are attending this meeting. I don't know if you believe in that or not, but I know it's real. I was telling the fellas at lunch about our church when it first got going. We, we had, I guess we had about five or 600 people and it was really going. And the men of the church that had invited me actually to lead the home group that became five or 600 in a church within, I guess a year, a year and a half maybe. They came to my house one day and they said, now Dr. Lee, you're getting up and saying the Lord said this and the Lord said that and you're not asking us. Now none of these men had been ordained as elders or in any form of leadership but as one of them said, <clears throat> you know, we've got the money in the church. We, we're the biggest givers, so you got to come to us first. And I said, you, you got to stop saying, thus saith the Lord. The Lord spoke to me while I was in prayer, and this is what I'm going to preach. And I, <laughs> I'll never forget, I said to those guys, I said, look, if this church is being... Uh, upheld by your finances it's dead while it lives and i'd rather just let it go ahead and die yeah. if if this is the way all because i i could have taken that baptist church that's being filled with the holy spirit with five thousand members not be out here with all due respect and i meant that with all due respect because i appreciated them i loved them but at the same time i i couldn't forsake the secret place i couldn't forsake what i was hearing and I couldn't forsake the fact that I was called there to deliver that word. And uh, the next Sunday, as I was driving my little diesel Volkswagen Rabbit, I don't know if y'all have ever heard of that, but I had a little <laughs> five-speed diesel Volkswagen Rabbit driving it to church, and the Holy Spirit said to my heart, you're not going to preach today. And I'm just going to segue here just a, just a moment. I, I, I don't, and nights like tonight, you almost feel like it's superfluous to preach because of the presence is so strong. 
How many of you sense the presence of the Lord in this place? I mean, I have a word that I am going to deliver tonight, but on my way to church that day, the Lord spoke to me and said, you're not going to preach today. And I thought, oh, it's going to be one of those heaven came down days and we're just going to praise the Lord and have a worship time. And we were all in prayer. The guys that were coming in, it was a prayer, actually an overgrown prayer meeting is what the church was. And uh, <clears throat> I get there and these seven families are sitting on the front row for the first time. They'd never done that before. They always sat around and I didn't care. But I said, oh, look what the Lord's done. Praise God. Lord is And right in the middle of the song service, one of the young attorneys that was in that group, he walked up to the microphone and said, we advise every one of you to leave this church because we are. Now, this is in the beginning days while God was about to do what he did to teach people just like you, dear sister, to pray and like you, Donna. God love you. And thank you for your words tonight. And I'll never forget, they got up and left, and I said, well, it looks like we've taken our eyes off of Jesus, so let's just put our eyes back on him, and we sang a couple of songs and went home. And <clears throat> How many of you, since you've known the Lord, have gone through times where you just felt kind of depressed? Can I see your hand? <laughs> well, we've only got one or two liars here tonight. Everybody, <laughs> I love all of you, but... <laughs> Man, that was a rough week. And I went out and laid on the ground where I would pray out in the woods. And I felt the, I felt the leaves crushing into my face because I just, I just dug in somewhere. And I said, I'm going to stay here until I hear from you. And at some point along the way there, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, those that are with you cannot leave you. And those that are not with you cannot stay. So the next Sunday... <laughs> The next Sunday, I preached to half the crowd, because half of them left. I preached the, the, what I call the 11th commandment, thou shalt not sweat it. And I said, so we're going to bless those people that left and not worry about it, except to bless them real good. Wherever they go, we pray they'll be a real blessing, and I meant it. And most of them came back, and, uh, but when judgment fell on the house of the man that took the microphone publicly, and I'm not going to go into that because it doesn't edify, but be that as it may, it fell very drastically within that week. The fear of God came on that region, and we saw the hand of God begin to move, and Along that time, we were meeting in a cafetorium at the high school there in Rockwall, Texas, and I got a call from the police department, and they said, now, there's a cowboy here in town that literally is a bull rider, and I told the guys this today, he rides bulls for a living, and he's a fireman during the week, but on the weekends, he goes out there to the big mesquite rodeo. It's one of the largest in the country, and he's a bull rider. But the thing about it is he had some bad experience in church somewhere along the way, because he, he hates preachers. And about once a month, it'll take four officers to take him into custody because he goes to find him a preacher to beat up. And if you see him walk into your church, you're going to know it when you see him because he's got that look on his face. <laughs> and when I saw him come in the back about two weeks later, man, I knew who he was. If I said everybody stand up, he'd sit down. He was eyeballing me like crazy. And I say everybody sit down, he'd stand up, right, all by himself. <laughs> so I kind of felt like something was coming. And he said, he walked up to me. The first thing he said was, you're either straight from heaven or you're straight from hell, but you aren't anywhere in between. You're not a, you're, you're not a normal preacher. And the next thing he said to me, he laid for me on a Wednesday night after service. He said, you want to go out to the truck with me? Now, I was alone. I was shut in the building. And he said, you want to go out to the truck with me? I'd been out to the truck with some good old boys like him before, and it never turned out right for me. It never worked out right for me. I'm a lover. I ain't a fighter. But I, I said, well, my daddy didn't. 
my daddy didn't raise a coward, so I'll go out to the truck with you. We get out to his old Chevrolet pickup. He opens the passenger door. He grabs the work boot, and he's thrust it into my chest. He said, well, there it is. And I tried to sound real macho, but my voice broke. I said, what, 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 uh, what is it? What is it? And I looked down in there and said, well, there's my tithe. And when you were talking tonight, it just brought that all back to me. There's my tithe. I've been tithing to my work boot because I've been looking for the real thing for a long time. And he said, I praise God. Are y'all all right tonight? Is everything, you all right? Everybody okay with this? And so the next Sunday, he comes forward walking down the aisle giving his life to Jesus. He's weeping at the altar right in the middle of church. And I had brought the work boot that was about $1,700 in there. For, and I, we put it in the church treasury. I didn't take a nickel of it, never did. And, and I said, y'all not gonna believe what was in this work boot. And I told the story and I dropped the boot there on the ground, but I wasn't, I, I never said anything to anybody about coming putting something in that boot. And all over the church, people started getting up and making out checks and taking cash, cramming it into that boot. About that same time, I drove my Volkswagen Rabbit over the high point of Rockwall County, and I said, Lord, I want this land right here for your kingdom. I claim it for your kingdom. The next day, somebody had made a wood sign with a magic marker saying for sale and a telephone number. I called the number and I said, I believe that it would honor God and your, uh, I talked to the guy, he said, well, my dad died and left me this land and it's 50 acres on the freeway and on I-30 and you know where that is. And I said, well, I believe it would honor your dad to put the, the best church in this region right there, amen. amen. He said, I don't care anything about your church, I want money. That's what he said. <laughs> Just like that, I just want the money. I said, how much do you want? Well, when he told me, it was an astronomical number in my mind at that time. And I said, well, I don't know how that's going to happen, but will you give me about six weeks to gather that money? I didn't say anything to any hu human being or any banker or anybody anywhere. I just talked to God in the secret place. But I kept the boot up on the altar. Amen. Daddy didn't raise a coward or a fool. I saw what that boot was doing. <laughs> and within six weeks, the last $50,000 came through a man who got a miracle that was wheeled in the back with a broken back and before I got to the pulpit that day, I said, You're going, somebody hears our back is being healed. It was a doctor that was trying to start his first practice and had skied into a, a, a tree and broke his back in two places. And I, before the music started in church, I got out and said, somebody's being healed of a broken back. And he said he heard his back go pop, pop. And that afternoon he went and found out that his back had been totally healed. Somebody say, praise God. We were $50,000 still short, but man, I tell you, money was coming in through, the, through that boot, and I, I was watching that about three o'clock in the morning. My, somebody's beating on my door, and it was the doctor that had the broken back, and he said, here's the last $50,000. Handed me a check to buy that land out there. He said, <laughs> he said to me, I said, well, doc, you, where did this, he said, I said, tell me more about this. He says, this is what we saved to start our first clinic. Can I tell you what happened to that doctor in the last few years, or the last 20 something years? He's become a multi-gozillionaire. <laughs> How many of y'all understand what I'm saying? He is somebody who, who, who loves Jesus with all his heart. But when he sowed that last seed that planted that place where the Lord told me to, to use that 
land where we built those buildings and started preaching on prayer that went all over the world and still is, praise God. It was not built by the bank, it was built by the boot. And so there are times you just need to say, praise God, look what the Lord has done. And I, I, just, I just wanted to say a huge amen to what Donna was saying because when the Holy Spirit inspires you to sow something, let me just tell you, when he said, prove me now, prove me now, that's the very same word for thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. He said, this is such a sure thing that when you sow, like Abram did, of his tithes to the Lord, he said, you can put me to the test on this. You can even tempt me with this. This is a guarantee. How many believe the Lord's going to bless everything that's being sown into this ministry tonight and beyond? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to live long enough to see you get the chopping center and some more stuff too. Amen. So just praise God. Now, can I just give you one more thing about the cowboy? I was preaching over here uh, in Andrews for about, I guess, six months at one time, and the cowboy walked in, and I just told that story about the cowboy and the boot. He walked in the back, and I hadn't seen him in years. And he began to tell me the story about his daughter because they called me, he called me on an afternoon and said, pray, my daughter just got T-boned by an 18-wheel truck. She's laying up there bleeding out because her liver has been severed into two pieces. And they say, we've got to go ahead and let her go because there's another one. He said, I won't do it. I won't let her go till I talk to the man of God. And I said, Dwayne, his name's Dwayne Ray. I said, Dwayne, call me back in 24 hours. I'm going to go into my secret place. And all I heard was, you're going to see my hand. How many of you know when you see the hand of God on anything, something miraculous is about to happen? Matter of fact, I just want to just declare tonight the hand of God is being released in this room tonight. I don't know what you need his hand on, but go ahead and read. Just, just wave at me right now and say, I need to see his hand. Because 24 hours later, he calls me back, and he's crying. They're screaming. I hear people wailing in the back, and he's in the hospital, uh, the, the waiting room out there, and the people are going crazy. And he said, three hours after I talked to you, I got this word. How many know he can send his word and heal us? Amen. The Bible says that. He said, three hours after I talked to you, they, they were taking an x-ray every hour on the hour. They said that the liver that was severed into two pieces, he said, was, was strangely growing back together. But the strange thing about it was, and they called several physicians in, and I saw these x-rays, and I heard the testimony from the medical physicians. He said, there was, this, there was a hand between the two severed parts of the liver. He said, a couple of hours, they, they took another x-ray, hour or so later, and the, there was less hand, and, but the liver was growing together. And within, within the 24-hour period, the liver had grown back together, and she was totally whole. And right at Saltgrass in Rockwall, Texas, she walked up to me, and I didn't know who she was. And she said, Dr. Lee, you don't know me, but I'm the one that had the hand that Jesus put his hand in my liver and he healed me. Prettiest little redheaded girl you ever saw. And I mean, the Lord, uh, we about had a runaway at salt grass. Amen. How many know what a runaway is? I wanted to share tonight that God is a miracle working God. And I'm hearing the Lord tonight that this isn't a laying on a hand service because the hand is being released right now. The word is being sent right now to heal you. Yeah. Old Roberts told me one day we're all being healed from something all the time. Yeah, come on. And those that don't think they are, they, they're not being honest because we're all growing. Somebody say we're all growing. We're all 
Now, and say, I know I am. Amen. And the Lord dealt with, dealt with me tonight to share with you about the speaking of the blood. Because in the early days of this prayer ministry, how this revelation came to me was not through Bible study. Although I'd been through four years of university with three years of Greek and then six years of seminary. That's a, somebody said, what do you want to get out of seminary? I just said, I just want out of seminary. <laughs> but I'd been studying the Bible for 10 years professionally. But I had never seen this in the scripture when I went and prayed with the man of God at 5 a.m. for 18 months. One morning I said, Lord, I've got the desire to pray, but I don't have the discipline of prayer in my life. I mean, know that prayer moves in three levels. It goes from desire to discipline to delight. Think about that. And I said, Lord, I've got such a hunger and a desire, but Lord, teach me to pray. And as I was saying that, I saw an open vision. And ladies and gentlemen, I don't have an open vision often, but I'm not talking about something I was thinking in my mind. It was like a panoramic screen before me, like a great big theater screen. And I saw it. And I saw the Lord, actually, I saw his back, and he, but he was carrying, he picked up and was carrying like this, a huge basin, and it looked like it was platinum or silver, but no doubt platinum. And he emptied the contents of that basin onto the altar of the Father, and the Father, I saw, was an immutable light. God is a spirit. That's talking about the Father. And those that worship him must worship in spirit and truth. And all of a sudden, I, when the blood hit the altar, I started hearing the blood speak. You know what he was saying? He was speaking the Hebrew names of God. He was speaking the names of God from the Old Testament. How many know that there were many names, like one mentioned here by Donna tonight, but I was hearing Jehovah said, Canoe, the Lord, my righteousness. Now, I don't know what you would have done if you had had an experience like this, but let me tell you what I started doing. I started agreeing with what the blood was saying. Yeah, yeah. Lord, you are my righteousness. Yeah. I was having a, a bona fide experience with God. I'm here to testify to you that God is real. Yes, is. His spirit. Son, on Good Friday, shed his blood, not just for our sins, our sorrows, our sicknesses, and to break Satan's power over our lives, but he also shed his blood so that that same blood could be the force and the power to enter the Holy of Holies. The blood is the transportation vehicle, if you will, that pulls you out of your flesh and moves you into the realm of the Spirit. I'd never had any experience like this before. In all the years we'd been praying in the Spirit, we'd been walking with God, we were living holy before the Lord, we were preaching and getting people saved, but I'd never experienced this Shekinah. See, that's where this revelation came from, guys. This is why God took it and Put it all over the world, and I can go nowhere in the world, and my dear wife will tell you, we go nowhere that people don't come up and say the words you said to me, and I'm more shocked about it than anyone because I thought the Lord just gave it for me. But he wasn't giving it just for me. He was giving, and then I heard Jehovah Shammah. I heard Jehovah Makadesh. I heard Jehovah Rapha. I heard, Je I was hearing the names being spoken, and I, I said, Lord, I'm, uh, and any time I, I preach for years, I said, if you think you're having experience with God, go and try to find it in the Bible. Because if it's not clear in the scripture, then, then you better look, look twice. You got to find it. And so I was rereading the book of Hebrews, and I got to Hebrews chapter 12 and verses 23 and 24. It said, you, and to Jesus, the mediator of of the new covenant this is in Hebrews 12 about verse 23 24 the mediator of the new covenant and the blood that speaks yeah. Come on. Yeah. better things than that of Abel 
Cain killed Abel, but every man that ever died, their blood spoke for something because the life is in the blood. <laughs> and the blood of Jesus is speaking the names of God, and when you get in agreement with what the blood is saying, I didn't realize what I was doing, but I was hallowing his name. I, I was hallowing the name of the Father because of what the Son of God had done. And the blood was speaking and declaring over my life who I was in him and who he was for me. And I began to just say, hallelujah, you are my healer. You are my provider. When you declare who he is, he becomes that in your experience. You are my salvation. I heard all, all these names. You are my shepherd. I shall not want. And I said, Lord, show it to me somewhere else in the Bible. And I turned back to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19. And y'all might want to look this up because it's right there. It says, we enter the holy of holies, or the holiest. We enter the holy of holies. And get this now. We enter the holy of holies by the blood of Jesus. I was led on this Good Friday all day long, and all I heard was tell them about what happened concerning the blood. Yeah. This is where this revelation came from. What you heard this morning about praying through the prayer that Jesus gave as an outline, it's all validated by the blood because everything in the prayer is bought and paid for by the blood. Yeah. The fatherhood of God happened not by meat, drink, or any kind of money, you couldn't buy that, but by the precious blood of the Lamb. In other words, we have been tr translated out of our flesh into the spirit realm when we begin to agree with what the blood is saying over our lives. Now, I'm not gonna preach long tonight, but I'm gonna preach pretty strong because the Lord's dealt with me today that we've got to understand that no matter how, mu how much we pray in the spirit or how much carpet we eat on the ground, no matter what, if we don't focus on the blood, agreeing with what he has already done for us, we will still walk away with a great desire, but we won't walk into the discipline of taking the prayer that teaches us how to pray the prayer that we traditionally have called the Lord's Prayer, that's nothing more than an outline like a professor would do in seminary. He'd give an outline up on the board and then he'd go back and explain the outline. That's what Jesus was giving, not once but twice in the Gospels. He gave it in the beginning of his ministry, Matthew 6. And then he gave it again when they were hearing him pray. Well, wouldn't that have been an experience? They came to Jesus and said, teach us to pray. And he didn't come up with a new outline. How many of Jesus appeared to you and said, here's your outline, now follow this when you pray. And I'm gonna give you the Holy Spirit to fill in the blanks. You're gonna fill in the outline, not by your reasoning or you're trying to figure stuff out because most of the stuff we need, we don't know how to pray for as we ought. So he gave us the Holy Spirit to fill in those blanks and I'll guarantee you, prayer then moves from desire into a holy discipline. That's not a bad, discipline for most people is a bad word. They don't like it. But can I tell you what discipline means to me? It means to be a follower. A disciple is one who just follows Jesus. And Jesus said, in the Great Commission, teaching them to observe everything I commanded you. In other words, this is what I'm commanding you about prayer. Follow this pattern or this outline. He gave it that way. But it wasn't, again, something that could be academically learned or something you can just study because people have been doing it for years. But it is an experiential reality Hallelujah. Lord bless that offering. Amen. Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. And God, in his mercy, gave me that revelation, and I thought it was just for me. And when I took it and started teaching it, 
Ladies and gentlemen, I never wrote anything down about it for almost eight years. I just taught it to a group of people and they began to do it and pray in the spirit and the rest of the story are cowboys with boots and broken back doctors and stuff that you can't put, you couldn't make happen in a hundred lifetimes. And so I challenge you tonight as we praise God for the blood of Jesus. Could you just, for just a moment, just close your eyes and lift your hands and say, Lord, thank you for the blood. Aren't you appreciative tonight that on, on Good Friday, some 2,000 plus years ago, he bled, and when his blood hit the earth, it caused the earth to have a nervous breakdown, but when it hit the altar, hallelujah, it began to speak the names of God Almighty, and Lord, we praise you tonight that you're our righteousness that you, by the blood of Jesus, have become our sanctifier. You are, Lord, the one who will never leave us or forsake us. You are our healer. Come on and praise him with me because that's what the blood is saying about you, that he is your provider. He is your protector. Hallelujah. And if you, and you see the spirit and the blood agree. And so you'll find yourself breaking out in the spirit, praying in the Holy Spirit. And then that amplifies your Shekinah presence. And it's an everyday thing. Amen. Because as you get to that part of the prayer where you begin to put your foot down, because you see, when you get in his presence, you don't just get in his presence to be in his presence. You get there to do kingdom business. Come, kingdom of God. Be done, will of God. It's like a man, look up at me for just a moment. It's like a man putting his foot down and declaring, I know you have a kingdom. How many believe that, how many believe that God's got a kingdom? God's got a will for your life. How many know he didn't wake up this morning and look down at you and say, oh no, what am I gonna do with that one? You know? He knows exactly what he wants to do, but he's waiting for you to agree with him. Put your foot down and declare nothing but the will of God will be done in my life today. And you pray it over you, then you pray it over your family. You pray it over those you love. You pray it then over your pastor and over the church and over the ministry that you're serving and that is serving you. And you'll watch as you pray it in prioritized order. Hallelujah. Your life will start getting into order because you got your rudder right. How many of y'all know what the rudder of your life is? It's your tongue. Your mouth is set on what God has set his heart on. And can I just go ahead and tell you, he's got his heart set on you. I'm not going to brag too much on Jesus, but I'm going to do my best. Amen. Hear me now. He doesn't, he, he, he doesn't love you. He's in love with you. That's why in Latin they called it the passion of the Christ. It was his passion to finish the work that the Father had sent him to do. And the result of that was the shedding of his blood. So as Hebrews 10, 19, I'm quoting again, it says, having therefore, brethren, boldness, we enter the holy of holies by the blood of the Lamb. One more time, just give him a little wave offering. Say, Lord, I do appreciate you for shedding your blood, for without it, there is no remission of sins. There is no healing of bodies. There, there, there literally is no hope in this life. But because of that blood, hallelujah, we can come into the presence of God. Somebody say every time. Oh, how many know the blood will never lose its power? Every time, it's gonna be there, waiting for you to speak Lord, you really are my righteousness. I wish I had a bunch of those laminated prayer cards here tonight that I had to pa pass them out so you could all have one. Well, let's try to get, the, get together on that so we can get them to everybody in this ministry. Amen. I want to get them to everybody in this ministry, and I'll be glad to, I'll be glad to help get that done, but you guys, y'all help me, and we'll get it done. Amen. Because I want, I, you know, this is one of the few places this is honestly that I have preached in the last few years 
where I know you're going to do something with it. I know you're not just going to listen to me, but you're going to do this. There's one thing to be a hearer of the word. It's altogether another thing to be a doer of the word. And you're going to be doers of this word. And this is going to transform your life just like it has your dear wife, just like it did you, Donna, and all that I've ever come in contact with it that got, got the revelation that the blood is speaking better things. Hallelujah. Now, <clears throat> I want to share one more thing tonight. Early when this began to move in me, the Holy Spirit showed me that Jesus entered the temple of God and the Bible says he cast out all those who bought and sold in the temple. How many of you remember the cleansing of the temple? Now, everybody say, I am a temple of God. And you are, you are, you are the temple of God. And the Bible says he overthrew the tables of the money changers, the seats of those who sold doves. And he said, and I'm going to leave you all with this on this visit. And he said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer. But you've made it, and anything else we make it. Now, he, he, he identified the money changers, a den of thieves. But if we make it anything other than a prayer-based move, a prayer-based ecclesia, that means called out ones or church, then it's going to come to nothing. It will go up and it will go down, but it will never accomplish what God intended it to do. Jesus said, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you've made it something else. You've made it a den of thieves. Now watch this. Then the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. And when the chief priests and the scribes heard the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying in the temple saying, Hosanna to the son of David, that's the same way of saying Hosanna to the Messiah. They were indignant. They were angry. How many of you know that when the Spirit starts moving, some get glad, but some get mad? And said to him, do you not hear what these children are saying? He said, yes, but have you never read that out of the mouths of babes and sucklings thou hast perfected praise? My first experience with Jesus was laying on a bed, woke up sometime early in the morning while it was still dark outside about daylight, and he was standing before me, and I said, Lord, what, are you, what do you want with me? And all he did was give me that passage right there. He gave me Matthew 21, 12 and following. And then it outlined itself for it right in front of my eyes. Here it goes. First of all, it becomes a house of purity. That's what God is doing first in our lives. How many know the fire is burning a lot hotter right now than it ever has before? The refiner's fire is, is burning in us to come to the place that we can go from a house of purity to becoming a house of prayer. Are you seeing this? After you become a house of prayer, the blind and the lame will come and, they, and he healed them. You become a house of power. Becoming a house of power will result in becoming a house of perfected praise. Now, did you see that transition? I didn't think this up, okay? This is what's given to me by the Holy Spirit. He said, this is a prayer cycle that you will go through over and over in your life as you go from faith to faith and glory to glory. In between those growing phases of your life, and we all agreed a little while ago, we're all growing, amen? You will go through a season where you will experience again the refiner's fire, a house of purity, He'll point things out. He'll call you to be some things and not do other things. He'll change you on the inside. Amen. Amen. Then you'll find yourself experiencing a greater presence. Hallelujah. Of being a house of prayer. How many of you know you're called to be a house of prayer? 
Somebody said, well, I'm not called to be an intercessor. I said, boy, wait just a minute. Are you called to follow Jesus? Because his ministry was just going from one place of prayer to the next place of prayer, all the way to the Garden of Gethsemane, all the way to the cross. Then he was raised from the dead, and he said, he's seated down right now at the right hand of the Father. And guess what Jesus is doing right now? He promised me years ago that when I started preaching like this on prayer, he would start praying for the people that are in the room. So I've got to go long enough for him to pray over all of you. And if you think I'm kidding, I'm not kidding. Oh, so, so, so I don't preach long, but I preach strong until he said, I got them all. He's praying for you right now. What's he praying? That you'll transition from one level of faith to a higher level of faith, one level of glory to a higher level of glory, and in between you'll find yourself becoming a house of purity, a house of prayer, then you'll start seeing miracles, a house of power where doctors have their backs healed and livers grow back together and stuff that just couldn't happen. The doctor told me my sister was dying because she had fourth level cervical cancer. And I said, well, that's, the, that's your facts, but I'm gonna tell you the truth. I was sitting in his office, the doctor, me, and my sister. And she, they'd say, well, we're gonna have to do an emergency surgery just to see if we can save her life. I said, well, the, you've got facts, but I know truth. He said, what are you talking about? He got mad. Now, I'm gonna tell you, he got really upset. I said, here's the truth, by his stripes, she's healed. And he quickly escorted me out of his office. They took my sister into the hospital. They operated on her, came back, and that doctor walked up to me and said, well, we got in there, but somehow the cancer was gone. I said, doctor, what happened? He said, I don't know, but you do. And I could go on and on and on. But he's still praying for people right now. Thank you, Jesus. God knows. The Father knows. I got to have him praying for me. Because I got work to do. Amen. And I have been young and now I'm a little older. I ain't old yet. Amen. But I've never seen the righteous forsaken or their seed out begging for bread. So he's going to move you through this cycle. Now watch this cycle. Right now you're going through a time where he's purifying. And he's pressing you into the place of prayer. You'll do it better after tonight than you've ever done it before. Because you're going to begin to pray on the agreement of what the blood is speaking for you. Amen. And then... Every one of you will see miracles happen. Amen. Amen. The Bible says these signs shall follow them that believe, not just the apostles and the prophets yeah. or the evangelists right. or the pastors and teachers. All the believers, we're all called to be miracle workers. I heard that tonight while I was sitting down here waiting to step up to preach. <laughs> Miracle workers, I heard it, miracle workers all over this room. I'm standing in a room full of people that are gonna see miracles. And the devil can't do anything about it, amen. There's some things he can't do anything about. So once you become a house of power, then you'll go to that level of a higher level of worship, a house of perfected praise. And I thought it was beautiful that he mentioned the children. Amen. Yeah. Have you never read? Because unless we come like little children and say, Lord, I'm still growing. I'm still reaching. I'm not, I haven't gotten to the place. Amen. I am praise God. You see, he's praying for people right now. And they're responding. God is moving by his spirit in this room tonight. And I don't really know how to close this meeting because you never close a meeting like this. 
You just ask the Holy Spirit to do what He wants to do. And what I felt in my spirit is that everybody that's in agreement, I'm ready to, for, to be a house of purity so that I can become a greater house of prayer, so that I can be a house of power. And I can experience being a house of perfected praise. Everybody in agreement with that. That's a cycle you'll run through your life until you go to be with the Lord. So wherever you are in that cycle, don't judge anybody that's not on. There is a, listen, we're all coming to our Father through Jesus Christ, but we're all on our own individual ladders. And if somebody's not, not at your level on your ladder, don't judge them for not being there. Just believe God that wherever they are, he is merciful, gracious, and understands it, and he is working in you to will and to do for his good pleasure. He's at work in you. That's why you're here tonight. You wouldn't have wanted to come out on a Friday night. It's Friday, isn't it? It's good Friday, isn't it? Amen. Hallelujah. It's good Friday. And he said, preach on the blood, but then show them this divine cycle because you're going to go through time for each... He's going to say, this has got to go. That's got to stay. Purifying us. So gentle, but so powerful. Then we agree with what the blood is saying. You're my righteousness. You're my sanctification. Lift a hand to the Lord right now. You're my healer. Amen. You're my provider, O Lord. You're my protector, O oh Lord. You are my shepherd. Hallelujah. Now, if you have a prayer language, just go ahead and release it for a moment because I feel such an anointing right now and I feel like I am through here, but he's not through. Ki o sotira mamende de la boca ta 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 ba ka ta 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 Pori ka fa sotira ti ka boru yanda de mala mama ka ta 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 This anointing this anointing this anointing that has birthed this work, the Lord said, I will finish what I started and you will live to see the fulfillment of the promise that I've given you in your heart. Hallelujah. You will not die, but you will live and declare the glory of God for what he gives you to do while you still live in your body. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare it. <laughs> the Lord says, I'm going to lead you to lead worship in a way that you never have before because the, the revival that's coming in is going to be a revival of perfected praise. There's going to be such a move of praise that you're going to begin to literally come into services and the worship's going to be so strong you won't be able to break it. And you'll know you can't do it, so you've got to go ahead and just write it on out because the Holy Spirit is call, has called you, and you know it, to be a worshiper and called you to lead people to worship God. Let's all say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 And I'm just hearing it. Amen. I'm hearing it all over everywhere right now. He's saying new beginnings. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I need one. Amen. I need one, Lord. I need one. I'm declaring new beginnings. Lord, did the New beginnings. New beginnings. Father, I thank you that we are thankful for what you've done in the past. It's like nothing that's coming in our present and in our future. You said that the people could not get through the closed door, that they've been knocking and the door would not open because 
of one thing, that they would not release the past so that they could experience the present and not be afraid to run through that door as the Lord opens it. And so, Lord, we're asking you now for the courage. Come on. I ask you to give us a divine impartation of courage. How many of you will agree with me we need a fresh anointing of courage right now? He's, he's pressing in on us tonight. He's releasing tonight a, a, a fresh anointing of Holy Spirit courage. He's saying, don't be afraid. It really is going to be all right in Jesus' mighty name. Now, Lord, as I release these people to you, I know that you are going to continue to pray for them. You're going to keep them, and you're going to perfect that which you have started in their lives. Thank you for the privilege, Father. By the power of the name of Jesus, to be in their presence and share my life and the message that you put in me. Let it now grow and let it expand all over Amarillo and throughout this region, God, that you've given me a promise that there would be a outpouring that had never been seen before and will never be seen again after it happens because of your imminent second coming. In Jesus' mighty name. Come on, Pastor. Amen. Come on, just one time. Stand to your feet. Grab the hand of the person next to you. That's it. Oh, 
Turning over the tables in the hardness of our heart. He's turning over the tables of the hardness in our heart. He's turning over the tables of the hardness of our hearts. My house will be called a house of prayer. I'm not, I'm not like grieved or, and I'm not sad, but I just haven't been able to stop. And I said, Lord, what is going on? And I'm reminded back in the very early days of, of my Christianity walk, I finally found out that Jesus was in love with me. And I would stop. I would be in worship, and I would just cry, and I would cry, and I would cry because he loved me, and he was in love with me. And I said, Lord, why can't I quit crying tonight? And he says, because not only am I restoring your first love. I am taking you to your last love. All of those things that you have loved that have been put before me, I am shaking them and I am taking them out of your life. All of those gods that have been placed before me, I am taking them and I am shaking them out of your life. I am becoming your Lord. I am becoming your God. As the rich young ruler came to Jesus and asked, what do I need to do to be saved? And he said, Jesus said to him, give everything, give everything to me. And he left grieved. And the rich young ruler left grieved. He left grieved. And why did he leave grieved? Because he had so much that he wasn't willing to give. And the Lord says, will you count the cost tonight? Will you count the cost tonight? Will you count the cost? I want all of you. I want all of you. Will you count the cost tonight? Will you follow him? Will you follow him? Will you say, yes, Lord, you will be my Lord and you will be my God. Purity, prayer, power, and perfected praise purity prayer power and perfected praise purity prayer power perfected praise purity prayer power perfected praise purity power Purity, perfected praise again. That's it. That's it. Purity, 
unity. He said to sing unto the Lord a new song. Purity, prayer, and power with perfected praise. <laughs> Purity, prayer, and power with perfected praise. <laughs> Purity, prayer, and power with perfected praise. <laughs> Purity, prayer, and power and perfected praise. <laughs> See, if I had my prophetic team up here, we would just be running with this one, man. He says to sing unto the Lord a new song. You know why you leave the grocery store singing the song that the grocery store is playing? So, Lord, I just thank you for the new songs that are in this room tonight. Lord, I thank you for the purity. I thank you for the prayer. Oh, man. Lord, I thank you for the power. Yeah, Pastor Johnny, strong, isn't it, man? Whew. Perfected praise. Yeah. And I will praise you forever and ever. Yes, I will praise you forever and ever. <laughs> See, some sing songs and hymns and spiritual songs and with tongues. Coming into the very reason that we've been born. It's not by might nor by power. It is truly by the Spirit, says the Lord. So, Lord, we just give honor where honor is due tonight. And that's the blood that speaks a better word. Right now, in Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you for the blood. The only reason any one of us is standing in this room is because of the blood of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we honor you and we say thank you that this is truly the weekend that is associated to Passover and Passover is a associated to the beginning of miracles. As the year begins, so the year will be. So Lord, we commission ourselves into purity, prayer, power, and perfected praise for the beginning of miracles. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said? Amen. Come on, can we give Dr. Larry a God bless you?
word over here. Y'all stretch your hands over towards the man and woman of God. I want to pray over them tonight. Father, I just thank you for Dr. Larry and Leah. I thank you, Father, for who they are in your kingdom. I thank you, Lord, for that. I thank you, Father, that they've been brought into your kingdom for such a time as this. That, Father, they're really running into and stepping into who you've called them to be. And Father, there's been a redemptive flow that's always flowed before them. Father, not just for them, but it's flowed from them and it's flowed before them. And so Father, I thank you, Lord, that their ministry is a redemptive ministry, that you're bringing them into places, Father, where you have a desire to redeem and where the fruit of redemption is ripe. So, Father, they're harvesters of redemptive fruit. And so, Father, I thank you that as they begin to run in this next season of their life, Lord, that they'll begin to see. I see this so clearly in the spirit. You're running down a road and men are going to begin to gather behind you and gather beside you and they're going to begin to run with you. I hear the spirit of the Lord saying that these are those that you've run with before that have left you and said, no, we can't run, but they're going to begin to find again that the roads that they've been running on are going to begin to intersect with the road that you're running on, and they're going to begin to find themselves merging again on the road that you're running on. It's going to take some of them by surprise, but, uh, excuse me, but others are going to begin to see the merger and begin to put their signal on and say, we're coming to join you. We're coming to run with you. And the Lord says the fruit that you've had, that you've laid down, you've stepped into the season of harvest of that seed that you sowed. Some things that you sowed were great, but then there were other things that were stolen and taken from you that God never said so. They, the, the thief came and he took it. And the Lord says, yes, also you've stepped into the season where the enemy is bringing back to you the enemy is bringing back to you seven times from his 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 bags of thievery bags of what he's stolen from you and the lord says as it comes is coming through those that you would never expect for they have been stewarding things that was stolen from you in a secular realm. And the Lord says that there are even those that would be witches and warlocks right. that have set themselves against you. God said, I have a hook in their jaw and I've laid a line in your hand and you're gonna to begin to pull them to the bank and you're going to begin to see many in the occult begin to come into the kingdom of God. I heard the Spirit of the Lord say that he is redeeming copyrights. Yeah. He's yeah. redeeming wow. copyrights. For there are some that have taken what God has birthed through you, and they've said, you don't own that, we own it. The Lord says, no, they don't own it, I own it, uh -huh. and I'm bringing it back into your hand. Oh, yeah. Copyrights yeah. that have been literally stolen wow. and shelved because of people's judgment against you, the Lord says, I am bringing redemption to those copyrights and I'm bringing them back into your hand. I'm visiting them with dreams. I'm going to begin to give them prophetic words to return to you, Larry Lee, the things that they have kept hidden from my body that I've birthed through you. Right. The Lord says there are two more books in you that you're going to write and you're going to bring it out of the secret place, but it will be not about the secret place. It will be, one will be about the alignment of my body from the secret place and the other one will be signed and wonders and miracles. For God is bringing you into a place that he is restoring upon you the working of miracles. For there have been two fathers, two spiritual fathers that have been in your life 
that have stepped into the unseen realm and their mantles have not been picked up. And the Lord says, I have hidden them. Oh, there have been many that said they took them, but no, they did not. They picked up something false. But the Lord says, I'm bringing the mantles of these two fathers into your life and up and upon your shoulders for this season. You'll wear it and you'll run with it and it will manifest for you as you begin to call for those that are sick and demon possessed. And the Lord says as you do this, it will not wear you out and it will not zap your strength for there will be a supernatural grace that he begins to release in both of your lives for this. And God will open the nations for you. There'll be a time that you will run to the nations and you'll run back to this nation. For I have put, says the Lord, a word and a call, a mandate on you for this nation as well. And you will begin to find yourself dreaming about conferences. And the Lord says, it'll be my dream, it won't be your dream, but I need to dream that dream through you to get it in the earth again. And you, I, the Lord says, he's gonna visit with you about a yearly conference in this nation to begin to bring a rebirthing of what he's birthed through you. The Lord says, as you begin to do this, you will begin to bring sons and daughters together and you will begin to lay your hands on them and send them throughout this nation for you are the piece of the puzzle that fell under the table that people have been looking for to finish the puzzle. And the Lord says that you are a corner piece And as they begin to rediscover you, they're rediscovering me. For the Lord says, son, I promised you things that you have not yet seen. And the enemy said you had to forfeit them. But I said, no, they were for this this time, not for that time. For there were those that came to you and they tried to take your gifting and they tried to prostitute it. And the Lord said, I would not have it. And I've removed their hands. And the Lord says, you did not lose friends. You lost people that wanted to be your pimp. That's right. That's exactly and they promised you money. And they promised you fame. And they promised you houses. But you said, no. Father promised me those things too. And God said, this is the season for my coming through for you, says the Lord, for I brought you to this place in your life for this time. So as the Lord begins to move on you in meeting with him, he's gonna give you a download how to bring these conferences together to shake the nation again. And the occult root that has been in this nation will have an ax laid to it once and for all. And I hear the Lord saying over you, daughter, that you're not a tag along. Uh -uh. You are an injection of nuclear power that begins to drive the gift and the anointing that God has for this man. There's been times that it's like he's run on fuel and his fuel has gotten low but you're like that nuclear cylinder that could cause a submarine to run for decades without being refueled. So I release over you a confidence, a coming out of the shadow, and an empowerment to empower this man of God as you run together. His fruit is your fruit. His reward is your reward because you're not two running together. You are one running with him. And, 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 and Dr. Larry, there's a healing you need in your body. And the Lord's doing that. He's doing that. I heard the word foreign sale, foreign sale. 
I rebuke that in the name of Jesus and I command it to be gone right now. I release this, that over this man today and within him even, Lord. No plague will come nigh his dwelling. No plague nor evil befall him. He'll, Psalms 139, Father, he'll have every page in his book lived out. And there will be some that will say that you died old. But the Lord will say over you, no, you'll die empty. So I release that over my brother tonight, Father. We call him into this new era of his life. The Lord said old money is returning to you. Hallelujah. Those that had sown into you in times past, their children and their children, children are going to begin to come to you and say, they left this in a will for you, but we couldn't find you. This was left here for you and that was left here for you and we got to get it out of our house into your house. And I heard the Lord say, did I not promise you that I was going to do these things for you? And when some things that you were stolen from you, you thought it was over. But the Lord says, you're coming into a new season of wealth that you've not seen yet. And it's for the assignment that he has on your life. And the Lord says also, it's not just on your life, it's on your children. Yes, amen. And the Lord said, I'm redeeming your children into the call, the apostolic mantle I don't know how many kids you got or where they're at, but I see one of your sons has an apostolic mantle on his life, but he's run another direction. And a daughter has a prophetic gift that has run another direction. And the Lord says they're getting ready to run into me. And the Lord says that I'm making their path slippery. And they will not be self-made. They will be made by me. He promised you they would be in ministry. And God says, you won't watch over the next six months what I do in them. So Lord, I decree into this prophetic word. His children are coming into their apostolic and their prophetic calls. Father, they will... They will will step into it, I decree that there's a grace coming upon them that they will be able to forget those things which are behind them and press violently in to the call that you have on their life through Christ. So Father, you've heard this man. And I thank you, Father, you said this is the season of answered prayer. There be a, even grandchildren. The Lord said the legacy will be for many and multiple generations. I see a grandson wanting to move in the house with you. And the Lord said, bring him in. (laughs) He's going to be a Samuel. And I'm going to give him a prophetic voice to his generation. But it will not just be a pulpit ministry. He will have favor 
with people in government and people in business for he will understand the law and he will understand finances. And I have mantled him as I did Joseph in a secular environment that I could use him in his fivefold calling to be a voice that would help bring a nation into alignment. So Lord, I just release that over him tonight and call him into it. Thank you, Lord. Not even your, the fruit of your womb. Father is saying, I am bringing a blessing through your bloodline that came from the marriage. For there have been those that had written you off and there have been those in your family that actually turned, I just saw it, I saw a dinner table and they turned the chair you would sit in around. And the Lord says, I'm opening back up the chair at the dinner table and I'm bringing a restoration in your family that they did not want, but I promised it to you, so I'm moving, moving, moving on their hearts. And as they begin to contact you, the Lord says, speak blessings. For as you release it, it's gonna melt them, and God said, I'm gonna restore to you what the enemy stole, because you married a man I told you to marry. So, Lord, I release that over her tonight in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Uh, nothing excites me more than the fact of watching the ministers that have come in on assignment to minister to us get ministered to. These are defining moments in the ones that God directs their path into this geographical location. What a privilege it is to be a part of first fruits. The Bible says you honor the Lord with the first fruit of all of your increase. And so Lord, we just honor you for that which was spoken into Dr. Larry and, and his precious wife, Leah, and that which was associated to Donna Shambach and that which you have spoken into us, God, we honor you with that word and we give it back to you, God, and we thank you that your word doesn't return to you void or fruitless, but it'll accomplish that which it's been sent to do in Jesus' mighty name. And last but not least, well, you know, here's the thing. Just like your dreams are movies, and mine are more like commercials, so will my word be to you. <laughs> but what, and I was not going to do this, and I argued with the Lord, and he still told me I needed to do this, because when you were mentioning the copyrights, and the copyrights that were stolen from you. God reminded me that when I was writing my book, I had written out all the scriptures from the Passion Translation that, were, that said godly lovers or lovers of God. And I made this beautiful book. And then I found out it was a copyright infringement. And the Lord challenged me and said, I told you to write a book. And so the next thing you know, two books came out of it. But the, the one, the first, is a secret place devotional from Matthew 6. Our Father who art in heaven. It has exhortations and proclamations and meditations and a place for your own little things. And I, as the first fruit, because I didn't even realize it till Rodney started talking about meeting you and talking to you. I had forgotten 
my history. And I had forgotten because some of this stuff came back from like 2012 yeah. that, that God brought it out of. But I had forgotten. And God is bringing that out for people to remember their heritage and to remember their future and where they're going. Thank you so much. Thank Bless you. you. Thank you. Amen. Oh. <laughs> I'd like to prophesy like Greg someday when I grow up. Amen. I, my God. Come on, let's stand to your feet and let's seal this thing. Just put your hand on your heart and it's going to be this simple. You're going to love it. You ready? Repeat after me, be it unto me, according to the power of your word, in Jesus' name, amen. Doors open at 9 a.m. tomorrow, and we'll see you back tomorrow morning.